On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself in my actions. I will always uphold the Constitution, the community, and the agency I serve. Welcome to episode number 21 of the On the Blue Line podcast. We call this Monday Morning Roll Call, and I am your host and founder of On the Blue Line, Wayne Mulder. Two things. Um, first of all, our podcasts are available to you now in a video format. If you've been listening the last couple of weeks, this will actually be the fourth one now. So just make sure you go over to our YouTube channel, On the Blue Line, and check it out. But uh, we also are going to be putting them on Facebook as well. So they're going to be available on the On the Blue Line business page as well as on YouTube. So be sure to check both of those out. Also, I've been receiving questions, and every once in a while people will talk about, hey, what can we do to support you? We love what you're doing, and obviously, you know, this is a business, and we're trying to grow it. So just wanted to let you know that we do now have a Patreon page, and if you're not familiar with what Patreon is, it allows you to support certain creative works that you want to get involved in, and then that money, there's different ways that it can work. So if you just go to the website, you can check out uh, in our show notes, I have a link to our Patreon page, and there's different ways that you can support if it's something that interests you, uh, some of them as little as a dollar per podcast, and then that there's other offers in there as well that you can get on your end. So definitely check it out, see if it's something that interests you. And if not, I just really appreciate the support and listening to the show and downloading these episodes and then sharing it with others. So again, thank you so much for your support in our mission. That does it for announcements for this week. The Monday morning roll call starts now. So Every day in our closed Facebook group, the On the Blue Line Guild, we're putting out new information, and it's usually daily theme, like we may have something for Monday and Tuesday. Well, on Wednesdays, about every other Wednesday, I'm putting out something called Ask Me Anything, and the hope is, is that people are going to come in there with questions, and then I'm going to go over them on these episodes. So if you want to do that, make sure that you join us in our closed Facebook group called the On the Blue Line Guild. This week, uh, the question that I want to answer to you is uh, what I think is a great question. What was your greatest fear for yourself and then your family when starting this career? And what is it now after being on the job if it has changed? So I thought about this for a little bit. The greatest fear for me was the question of whether or not I had what it took to do this career. That, that may seem strange depending on what you did before law enforcement or how young you were when you came into law enforcement. But for me, I came into this career, I was in my 30s, and I had previously been running a small business and in a career that I had worked in most of my life. And here I was, I was considering considering this move, and this move was going to be to a completely different career, a paramilitary type organization, and just a completely different mindset. Or, or at least I thought it was a completely different mindset from what I'd been doing previously in the business world. I didn't see this until after I'd started how similar this job was and is to running a small business, this job here in law enforcement. See, this may also seem strange to you, but really what I found is that there were more similarities than differences and that these core attributes, these core behaviors, they, they help you excel in the small business environment are also very beneficial in the law enforcement career. Integrity, for instance, this is an obvious one, and we talk a lot about it on the show, but doing the right thing, even when no one else is looking, regardless of the outcome, this is a key to running a small business. But someone with integrity will stand out in a world, in a world of people who are often out to get ahead by any means necessary, and regardless of how many others they have to step over. The way you deal with customers, the way you help to solve their problems, the way that you are there for them, even if your company is at fault, People know they are operating and they are working with somebody who operates out of integrity, and it will affect your business. Integrity is important in life because it is so important to life in general, and it's important in every career, including law enforcement, for the same reason. So this customer service mindset. Now, there is always the customer is always right crowd, and that could be considered a conflict with law enforcement. But the reality is the customer isn't necessarily always right. But there is no harm in allowing them to believe they are if it brings the matter to a successful conclusion. People are not necessarily always right, but that doesn't mean that you have to win a war of wills right there with them on the side of the street. 
Whether in a small business environment or in a law enforcement, the art of persuasion, that reaching that win-win, that allowing for creative compromise and knowing the difference, knowing when you have to hold the hard line and when you can compromise. The art of dealing with people, these are so important to your success. Now, I'm not talking about major incidents here. I'm not talking about dealing with someone who's on an unknown substance and is just being playing unreasonable. Sometimes in law enforcement, immediate and swift action is the only and safest, safest action for everyone involved. However, in many daily calls or for things like neighbor disputes and complaints about this or that, people oftentimes just want to be heard. They just want you to hear them out and maybe offer some possible solutions. Even if they know that probably nothing is actually going to come of it, they're thankful that you took the time to listen to them. And that is similar in both the business world and in the law enforcement world. Another thing is, you know, they say law enforcement can be hours of, hours of boredom with moments of terrifying excitement. It's in these hours of boredom that that parallel, this running of a small business really came true to me. You know, the copious amounts of paperwork, the reports, the forms, the paperwork for paperwork, as we'd say. So for me now, this has all changed. And it was that I was able to resolve this fear early on as I saw that my previous career was actually, it was just training, training for this one. It ingrained in me the knowledge and the core values that would serve me best in this career and throughout this career. I began to feel as though running a business and the headaches and triumphs that will come with it are exactly the same emotions and lessons that help you to have a successful career in law enforcement. Now, the second part of this question almost reads like what my greatest fear for myself and my family is now after having spent years in law enforcement. So let me go ahead and answer that as well. I would say that it has gone from a fear of questioning whether or not I can do the job and has migrated into a fear that the job could be all-encompassing, that it could become this, all, this force in my life, that everything else would kind of slip wayside, in, including my family and all, and I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with other deputies and other officers. The reality is, is that this career and other similar ones can come to define us. The always ready mentality that could one day save your life in this career, it can also help make you more distant and guarded with those you love the most. The shift work, the last minute requirements, for those of you working in law enforcement, you know what I mean. You may be on 12-hour shifts, which allows you to work only 7 out of 14 days, which sounds like a lot of time off. But depending on your role, many times it may take you a day to decompress. So you figure your first day out of the two is for decompression. Then by the time you get anything done on the next day, your errands and so forth, because it's very difficult on the days you work on a 12-hour shift, then you're headed back to work, and the cycle just begins. And if you're on night shift, as you can imagine, that's even worse many times. Also, I mentioned that there's last minute things. So you may have a state attorney's office that calls at the last moment and says, hey, we need you here tomorrow or we need you here next week that we've got a trial that we didn't, weren't expecting. So we didn't send out the subpoena. And all these things happen that you're not even planning on. Or maybe something happens during your shift and now you're staying a little bit later. Or maybe you've got a scheduling change, something requiring you to be there the next day and you had no warning. See, these are not complaints. They're just a reality of this career. And it is why we should show gratitude to those who are willing to work in this career and careers like it. But what so often suffers because of the cyclical nature and because of the demanding nature is family life. It's time spent on personal improvement, time spent on health. And these things, when they suffer, and that was my greatest fear at this stage of my career, is this concern that the career may have me rather than me having the career. So that is the reason I started on the blue line. I saw marriages suffering. I saw people losing themselves and their autonomy. I saw the working full time, picking up off duties on their days off, picking up other shifts, picking up overtime, any time that was available. And the focus becomes the career and it would literally be killing them. Health was suffering. Relationships were suffering. Personal goals were suffering. They were not becoming who they were meant to be, who they were created to be. And sadly, the focus becomes... Well, I'm just going to wait till I retire and then I'm going to live and do this or that. And then I'll follow my dreams. Then I'm going to follow my passions. Then I will slow down. And you know what? Then will likely be too late. Statistics that showing many officers dying within five years of retirement. And here they are in this state. It's a 30 year retirement. So they wait until they're 55, 60, 65. Now you're going to start doing things that you had been wanting to do all along. 
It, it doesn't make sense, and it, it seems tragic. My greatest fear as time ticks by in this career for myself and my family was to get stuck in this trap, to go down this road, this cycle, this treadmill of never actually walking in line with my calling, never taking my life to the next level or allowing my personal life to fall apart due to my career. Fortunately, with this fear comes the clarity and the reality of choice. My actions and reactions can influence these things and the choices I make can bring these into balance or at least congruence, maybe not balance, but at least congruence, where they complement each other rather than tear it apart. And to that point, don't misunderstand me. I talk about these things from time to time and I make statements about how the career can negatively affect your personal life, or I'll make a blanket statement where I say not letting the career define who you are. And invariably, I'll get some, someone will feed back or give me an answer and say, well, I love being a cop. It's all I ever wanted to be. Then great. You have found your passion. What makes you come alive? And many in law enforcement, myself included, feel this way. We can echo with that sentiment. But just don't let it become where you feel as though something changed tomorrow, or if something did change for you tomorrow, that there is nothing more to live for, or there, you don't have family worth fighting for, whatever it may be. See, that's the danger. Love what you are doing, absolutely. Be completely bought in, absolutely. Absolutely. And know that no matter what career, what calling, we should always be striving to improve and better ourselves. In doing so, it will make us better in our careers and with our family. So thanks for the great question. If you have a question that you would like answered in a future show, please follow the link in the show notes to our closed Facebook group and join the On the Blue Line Guild. And in there, every other Wednesday, I'll be asking for an Ask Me Anything post, and we will go through it in a future show. This week, what I wanted to bring up was just kind of a reminder. Just the, It's now the first full week of August, and it's only five more months in the year, or the annoying reminder, 141 days to Christmas. Whatever measurement you use, the year is quickly flying by, as they so often do, and seem to even more the older we get. What I want to remind you is if any of the goals that you had set for this year back in January... Uh, we had, we've talked about it several times in previous episodes about setting goals and the importance of having a target if you intend to hit one. You have to have a target if you want to know that you've ever reached the target. But however, what happens so often in life, and I know it happens with me and I'm sure it happens with you, is that we get to the point where we just get so busy, so bogged down with a day-to-day that we forget what we're aiming for. We don't keep up with a morning routine or an evening routine like we talked about back in episode five of Monday Morning Roll Call. And we may have set some goals back towards the beginning of the year, but here we are months later, and maybe we haven't worked on them. Maybe we haven't gone to them. Remember in those previous episodes, we talked about the SMART method, the uh, acronym meaning specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. That's how we want to set goals. But what happens so often is we quit tracking them. We quit assessing where we are and where we are going with them and what we were hoping to achieve and when we were hoping to achieve it. Remember, we have to not only set goals in order to set a definitive direction of where we are going, we have to be willing to change and alter that course as needed. And that only comes from the timely assessment of where we are and where we are going. So with more than half the year over, I encourage you to look at the goals you set for yourself this year. Reevaluate them. Maybe they are no longer relevant. Maybe the results are not as measurable as you thought. Maybe it's too ambiguous and you need to be more specific. Maybe they're no longer relevant to what you're trying to achieve with your family or your career. Maybe something special like weight loss or a spiritual or mental goal. Whatever it is, whatever it was, I encourage you to find where you wrote it down. Reevaluate it, reassess it, and then try to make it a part of your daily and weekly routine so you can stay on track. And if you're just listening to this and you are thinking, well, I like the idea of setting some goals, but I didn't do it earlier this year. Maybe I should just wait until January or the proverbial later. I'll do it later. No, no, no. Just as the best time to plant a tree was decades ago and the second best time is right this moment, there's no difference. Start now to plant those seeds of getting you to achieve the things that you're wanting to achieve in your life. There'll be more on this in the future weeks and future months because I truly believe that goal setting is a fundamental skill that allows us to accomplish so many important things in our business, our personal, and our family lives. So with that, that does it for this week's Monday Morning Roll Call. Please check out the show notes and follow all the links or visit our website at onthebluelining.com. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. I'll see you next Monday at Roll Call. And in the meantime, 
I will see you out there on the blue line. Thank you.